Hello everybody and welcome to another one of Iron Shield Financial Planning's Fly on the Wall webinars. My name is Scott Plaskett and I'm a certified financial planner and the senior financial planner and CEO of the fee-based financial planning firm, Iron Shield Financial Planning. If this is your first time tuning into a fly on the wall recording, let me quickly explain to you what this is. You're going to experience what it's like to be a fly on the wall during one of my update calls with a member of our Top Guns network. This network is my personal network of specialists. Every so often I ask a member of my network to touch base with me to bring me up to speed on the latest happenings in their area. And when they call me, I record the call so you can be a fly on the wall for that call. In today's episode, I have an update call with Charles Wilton, a portfolio manager at Raymond James Limited, a Canadian subsidiary of Raymond James Financial. Raymond James is one of the most respected investment management firms in North America. I love speaking directly to portfolio managers about their process. Process is so important to investing, and when I can get a portfolio manager to explain their process in plain English, we all benefit from this wisdom. Now, here's the call. Charles, thank you for sort of taking the time today to go through a new acquisition that we're seeing show up in the portfolio, CBI, which is, uh, you know, always interesting. I always love it when I see something new show up in the portfolio because that pretty much tells me that there's a real opportunity that you're taking advantage of. So I thought what I'd do is... Uh, have a bit of a discussion with you about what it is about CBI, why you included it in the portfolio, and just kind of let you chat about why now is the right time to, to buy CBI. Great. Okay, thanks, Scott. Well, CBI, Chicago Bridge, it's a 125-year-old company. They're worth about $4.5 billion, and they're headquartered in the Netherlands, and they have 54,000 employees uh, all across the globe. And what makes them interesting, they're a, they're a engineering, construction, and maintenance. Uh, they have fabrication services, technology, and government solutions, all in the energy field, running from oil and gas and nuclear and pipeline and liquid natural gas. And they're a powerhouse all over the world. So what happened is that we see oil come down and we've seen devastate we've seen oil come down 50 percent and we've certainly seen oil stocks and that down and we've seen uh, the peripheral type of companies uh, come down as well so I've had my eye on Chicago Bridge for a while and now it has come down almost 50 percent and it's created a to me a massive opportunity their their backlog their backlog, which is many, many billions of dollars, is not affected by the price by the current price of oil. So they have projects going on as you know, liquid natural gas. These are these are multi-billion-dollar operations and construction companies, uh, construction projects all over the world. So the price of oil and gas really doesn't affect these long-term, uh, long-term facilities. But what, again, we see is a gut reaction from the market to throw out the baby with the bathwater, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. their, their, competitive, their, their, their competitive advantage is that they're 125 years old. They have uh, massive geophysical areas where they, they're, they're all over the world, and they have a very, very heavy backlog and a very, very large uh, diversification. So that creates an that creates an opportunity. Now, what I like is there's a bit of uh, there's a bit of uh, whipped cream on the top. Is that Berkshire Hathaway owns 9.9 percent of the company? Interesting. Okay. Which is which is Warren Buffett company. So really, what we're looking at is we're looking at pockets around the world. We're looking at uh, uh, we're looking at areas where the the resource market. Get, the same as the the financial market. When the financial market collapsed, we went and we looked at really good banks and we made money there. Here we're looking for now. I don't I don't invest in resource stocks for obvious reasons. But when we get into opportunities for the periphery, for companies that are not really they're not really they don't they don't really depend on what the price of oil and gas is on a day to day basis, and we have such a knee jerk reaction with such a wonderful company it creates an opportunity excellent and so what are the what are the, the metrics saying as we talked about before if we go in and we look at the evaluation on the right side of screening we go down to down to the bottom here we see uh, CBI at 0.9 and as we've discussed before if that number if that number was one then the market expects the company will do 
what they've done last year. They'll do it. The expectation is that it, that it won't grow and it won't lose money if it's at one. If it's below one, the market is saying, based on the economic book value because of the cash, because of the actual earnings that it makes, the market is saying that this company will never grow again. And then what are the metrics saying beyond that? So how, can, how do we know that the company is probably going to continue to grow? Well, we're, it's, it's going to continue to grow. One, because we're looking at the economic earnings are rising. That means if we, if we look at what the, the net, as we always talk about, the net, net, net earnings, if we look at the net earnings and we, we see that those earnings are still rising. They're in the top quintile of, uh, of companies that make a very high uh, return on their invested capital, and they have a massive backlog. Okay. So what the, what the market is doing is they're taking out billions of dollars worth of the value of the company in the last six months. Yeah. So what you're saying, if, you know, if I can put it into sort of layman's terms here, what you're saying is that the valuation says, you know, you, you know, with this point nine, saying that okay, the market seems to think that the company is not going to not going to make any money going forward. Yet when you take a look at the return on invested capital, it says here CBI is at fifteen percent. So therefore, fifteen percent is what the company's been earning on their capital that they're investing in the company. Yet the market says it's not going to grow at all. So there's a disconnect between those two. Is that a fair yes, way to summarize it? Yes. Yes. And when we look at these numbers too, we have to make sure we remember because these numbers are numbers that have been reconciled with the gap accounting. So these are not numbers that you would just get out of the out of a research report by somebody doing normal kind of research. When we're looking at what the earnings are in the fifteen percent return on invested capital. That means net net of everything. These are very scrub numbers. Mm -hmm. So these are way more attractive uh, than what you would normally see. And when it's 0.9, what the market is saying is that the company will lose 10% for every year forever. Right, right. Yeah, well, that makes total sense. I mean, especially when you've got a company that seems, to, you know, that has the the, the the standing power and staying power that this company, as you say, has 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 shown to have, you, would you say it was a hundred and twenty five year old company? Yes. Yeah. So I mean, this this company's been around for a while, um, and they've just got you know an attractive track record uh, that the market, for whatever reason, is just not um, not putting a lot of weight in. Uh, or wait on so uh, so that makes uh, makes total and this sense. is another this is this is another example of when we're evaluating a business doing a deep dive on the business this is another example of when we look at the numbers we, we we look at the quality of the business we look at the quality of the earnings and then we look at what the market's doing and what the market is saying we say this is a totally missed price company mm-hmm so the expectation are the expectation is that this company will never grow again. Well, that's a little ridiculous. Now we flip it on the other side. If it was at three or four, then we would say there's no way that the expectations could be met because they're so extreme. Right, which is yeah, often on the sell side, how you you would you would sell us. Right, sort so of we're a, trying to man it. We're trying to manage the expectations of what the market is saying, which is. The market is saying this is finished. It will lose 10% every year. We say that's not true. And that's how we make money is because we buy missed quality businesses at a missed price, uh, you know, at, at, at a company that's mispriced. Right. And then when you add the fact that you've got some a, a wonderful business, this is what we concentrate on. Yeah, no, that's interesting. And what I also find interesting is, you know, if we go back a handful of years, you know, this is what happened in the financial sector. There was a big financial meltdown. And all of a sudden, there were some great businesses that were just completely mispriced because they were kind of, as you say, the, you know, baby was thrown out with the bathwater. In the most recent, you know, markets, we've had gone through a, the, the price of oil dropping. And there was a, there's a lot of carnage that comes from that. And a lot of companies are kind of painted with the same tarnished brush that they really shouldn't be. Um, and so, you know, again, there's where the, the mispricing takes place. It's uh, the, the, the deep dive and the, the research that goes into identifying great companies and then waiting for these companies to sort of get into a mispriced zone where you can then capitalize on that and, uh, and put them in the portfolio, which is, you know, 
logically it, it sounds amazing. Now, obviously putting that into practice is more, much more challenging than just, than it sounds, uh, you know, the way you put it together and the way we have these, these calls, it kind of makes it sound like it's really, really easy to do. But I would believe it's an extremely difficult, uh, it's extremely difficult to find opportunities like we're seeing in front of us today with, with, with CBI. Uh, it's not like they come, ac- come across your desk every single day. Well, no, they don't, and good opportunities don't. And good opportunities are fairly rare. This is why I always say if there's a lot of upset and turmoil in the marketplace, which is creating a lot of volatility, it's Christmas for us <laughs> because we're going, we're going and looking. So, but I concentrate way more on the predictability factor. I don't want to buy a company just because it's, because it's attractive that I don't have some kind of semblance on what the actual earnings could be and what the, what the, the actual growth is, which is why you see these kind of companies in our portfolio. We haven't had a blow up. We don't have companies that are all over the place. So the predictability factor is important from my peace of mind. The ability to go and look for companies uh, and research and study the businesses and you have a big list of companies and you hope that they will come to you. So um, you notice that the, the oil market and the mining market blew up. It never affected us at all. Right. But what it did is it created, because we said we wouldn't go to buy resource companies, because we're looking at a third-party commodity, and there's no predictability factor into it. So what happens, the market blows up, all these companies come off 50%, then we sort of uh, snoop around the outskirts to find really quality, predictable businesses that, yes, they make money in the oil and gas business, but it's not directly responsible for the price of the commodity. Right which creates an opportunity to buy a 125-year-old company that just dropped 50% basically overnight. Right. Well, I love it. I love it. I mean, that's, that's what investing is all about. So, uh, you know, and it, and it sounds like by doing it that way, it's sort of built into the whole process is, is, you know, that high margin of safety. It just builds in protection. You're buying great companies at uh, deep discounts and, you know, it. Uh, I just. My point, my, and my point is, is that if I went and bought the if I, if I could only buy one company, and and each company that you buy, you're looking at it as if this is the only company in the world or the best company in the world. And once you've done your deep dive and you've done the the research on it, would you be comfortable owning Chicago Bridge as a private company that your family owned? And I would love that. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, super. Thanks so much for taking the time to go through that. I think it's really interesting to see what goes into the decisions uh, that you have to make on a regular basis that uh, really lead to uh, the type of historical performance that you've uh, you've been able to, to to bring to the table. So I appreciate you going through that, and I uh, always, always look forward to our calls, and thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you for listening to today's call. If you require further information or have a question relating to today's call, please go to the comments section in the show notes below. Ask your question or make your comment and we'll respond directly online. If you would like to take advantage of a free, no obligation appointment, please call me at 416-626-6515. Or you can visit us on YouTube by checking out our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Ironshield CFP. Follow me on Twitter twitter.com forward slash ironshield cfp like us on facebook facebook.com forward slash ironshield cfp or you can connect with me on linkedin